Greetings YouTube. It's Mike Kaylee 7 here. I don't know what day it is. I mean, I know it's Wednesday. Let's see. 20th. I think today's the 20th of September 2023. My current mileage is 27,806. Tire pressure 35, 36 and 35, so. Not terrible, not great. Passable. So some of you might say, what's that blinking light? It's because my tire pressure is a little bit lower than the bike likes. But it's okay. I keep meaning to do stuff, you know, like, I want to fill the tires up again, and I haven't done it yet. Goodness, I have to clean my windshield. It is so nasty. Oop. I gotta put my pin lock in. So I'll start out today's ride by telling you about uh, Harley Trek. Harley Trek, if you're watching, I hope you're okay. I know you're going through some real hell, and I really hope that you come through it completely and better. Stronger, faster, better. So, uh, Harley Trek has had a rough go of it the past few years, and uh, found out recently through Smyrna Cowboy, who's friends with Harley Trek's mom. That uh, poor old HT had uh, fallen and uh, was unconscious for two days, undiscovered. He was in the hospital for a week or so, had seizures and strokes and stuff. The poor dude, I mean, my God. So, uh, please keep Harley Trek, Mark in your thoughts and prayers I don't know if he still owns motorcycles anymore I don't know anything about his life situation except that he's been in a bad way lately real bad way and uh, the only reason I'm telling you about it now is because I saw that uh, Smyrna Cowboy posted a video about it or part of his video was about it what are you doing there? Okay. So anyway, yeah, Harley Trick, not doing well. So if you want to see the picture of him, uh, which I don't agree with posting that picture because that, that picture traumatized me. But Dave, uh, Smyrna Cowboys video hosts a picture of that in there in, in the video. Ooh. It reminds you that, you know, you could go at any moment. You never know what's going to happen to you. You gotta be careful and uh, appreciate now as much as you can because you don't know if you'll be able to appreciate tomorrow. And that's why I'm taking the long way to work because I'm gonna have a little bit of fun on the way. Just a little bit, tiny smidge. If anybody doesn't like it, I'll just stay later. Like I've done many a time and not gotten any credit for it. In other news, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yesterday I had anaphylaxis again, three o'clock in the morning. The way it starts is. Uh, usually I get terrible diarrhea I'm sharing too much I know and it, it has a very uh, malodorous aspect to it that's unusual and then my my hands my, the palms of my hands start itching terribly then it progresses to around my neck where my collar would be 
and then into my ear canals, the back of my head, all those get super itchy and flushed. My heart starts racing. So I, I knew the moment I had those two itchy hands that I had to do something. So I got nine Benadryls. Nine. Took all of them. Chewed them. Because you got to get on it quick. And people are going to say, can you overdose on Benadryls? Not according to the doctor I had in the emergency room. She said that she had a guy try to commit suicide by taking a whole bottle of them. And all he did was get real sleepy and dizzy. So anyway, it stopped the anaphylaxis before I needed my EpiPen. But then, of course, it turns me into a zombie. So I wasn't able to actually go to work until 10.30 in the morning yesterday because I was still too dizzy to function well. I made an appointment with my doctor. I want to get tested for possible heavy metals. I can't see past that sign. Oh, the road's closed anyway. Oh, glad I didn't go that way. So let's see if we can get anything going on. Get me right. As I negotiate this twisty. Uh. <laughs> Having a good old time out here. I don't know, you can't see my smile, but I'm smiling. Happily, happily. Ah. Uh. That was good. So, uh, let's see. So I almost died again. It's uh, my 13th time this year of anaphylaxis, and nobody knows why. I did all the blood tests that you can do, and uh, nothing. So I'm going to try to get tested for aller allergy to metals. Maybe I'm allergic to uh, the titanium in me from my accident 10 years ago. I don't know. Maybe it's the gallbladder. Maybe lacking a gallbladder caused it. I don't know. All I know is I'm tired of this, and I want it to stop. I want to be able to live my life again. More houses. Beautiful sunny day, not too many clouds in the sky. As I go down here on Barber Bridge Road, very rusty at the cornering here. I gotta remember my line. That was a little bit better. Yeah, that was alright. Now I'm going to blow out some cobwebs. Oh, that was fun. Uh, 
I believe it is good once in a while to give the engine a proper workout. And this is the safe road to do that on. Barbara Bridge Road. I call it Century Road. Alright, so let's see. Um, what can I talk about? I guess I could do some shout outs. So, shout out to Road Reality. Flip the Flip and the Blue Mule. Ara, Ara, Ana, Aranea at Velivolu. Something like that. Hello. Road Glide, what's up? Let's see, uh, Judy Sheldon, hello, Lady Jane, hi sis, Moose, what's up Moose, hey Moose, and uh, let's see, this morning cowboy of course, I've already talked about Harley Trek, Harley Trek, hi, I hope you're doing alright, Bronco Ride, Harley Day Rider, Bodine 52, uh, let's see, the Suburban Rider. I'm trying to remember people from the past. Belma. Have Dog Will Scooter. Svengali. Iceman. Ike. I was talking to Wooden Shares last night about how life uh, kind of loses its luster over time. I think everybody gets to that point where you're like, really? Can I die now? And there's something nobody wants to say, because, you know, bad luck in that. But um, every once in a while you're like, geez, you know, I'm still here. And uh, he was saying how people choose things to, to do to keep themselves off the thought, the reality that you know, life is meaningless. And I I don't know if I necessarily agree with what chairs on that. I think external to us life has no meaning. Right? Uh, so to a stop sign, life has no meaning. To a to an animal, life has no meaning except, you know, I need to eat, I need to have sex, I need to sleep, I need to poop. So that, uh, that aspect of, you know, like, that's a fence, or this is a motorcycle, this is a motovlog, allegedly. Is it really? Not outside the human experience, it isn't. Is there good and evil? Only in the hearts of humans. There's no evil in a cat. There's no evil in a fence post or a tree. Evil exists only within human beings. And I'm talking evil, like genocide, serial killers, you know, that kind of thing. Psychopaths. So, what what meaning do I have? What meaning do I make for myself? And I think it's because you choose to make the meaning yourself. That's where the problem is. Some people don't don't realize that you're free to choose. You could choose to have your own meaning or you could choose to despair in a lack of meaning but either way the choice is yours so I choose to have meaning for myself and I don't I know that it's not a universal thing and sure a hundred years from now nobody's gonna know my name nobody's gonna remember me uh, unless there's some kind of a digital archaeologist Look at me being nice, letting somebody go. Isn't that nice? Got 
And you might say, well, in a hundred years, I might remember you. Okay, well, how about a million years? No. A billion, a trillion, a quadrillion. The planet won't even be here at that point. If you go deep enough into time, according to the way, you know, we understand the universe as of today, uh, eventually there'll be nothing but particles left. And so we'll still be here as particles floating, smeared across space and time forever. But we won't know it. At least there's no concrete proof. I hope there's something. And I've, I've seen some pretty freaky stories about stuff, but I don't know. I'm not really going to worry about it because I, I have now to enjoy. I could, I'm doing this. This is fun. This is nice. I enjoy it. Saxophone, same kind of thing. Helping people. That's my whole career is helping people. I've dedicated my life to helping other people. I don't have to serve somebody. I get to serve somebody. And I feel privileged to be able to do so. And when I make a difference in a person's life, even a small difference, it brings me a great deal of happiness. And I don't do it for the happiness. I do it because that's the right thing to do. I don't know where I get my moral compass from. It could be God. It could be Jehovah, which is God. Right? If you're talking about the monotheism. It could be um, one of the many pan panopticon of gods, or whatever, uh, panoply of gods, like uh, Shiva, Rama, whatever. It could be Zeus, it could be uh, Gaia, who the hell knows? I don't know where I get my moral compass, maybe it's biology, maybe, you know, anything that causes pain and suffering is bad, anything that alleviates it is good, but not necessarily, but yeah. So, I choose my own meaning. I make my own way. I don't worry about it. Worrying doesn't help you. When I go to bed, it's time for sleep. It's not time for me to think about stuff. So I focus on sleep. I kind of life hack myself into doing things. I get it, I get in the bed, and I put in my earbuds, and I put on my sleepy music. If you look on my YouTube channel, on my playlist, you'll see a, a playlist called Sleep, You Bastard. And that's my uh, playlist, and I choose a different one almost every night from my playlist. What the hell are you doing? That was weird. And then I put uh, my mask on for my CPAP put my eye mask on so I don't see any light because my sweet pea likes to watch TV when she's going to sleep and she has it on a timer but I want to sleep without having that light or the sound in my ears plus she snores so uh, that's what I do and then I, I go to sleep and I know someday what if the electricity goes I'll sleep anyway maybe even better because I wouldn't have to watch that TV So what's the point of all this? It's to say to you, meaning is what you make of it. Your time in existence is what you make of it. There are things that you can't control, but you can control your thoughts. You can control, to a certain extent, your emotions and how the world affects you. So choose happiness. Choose life, choose happiness. And if you get to a point where life is no longer worth it, then, you know, choose death, I guess. My mom, she she said, this isn't a life worth living. I'm 82 years old. I can't get out of my chair. I can barely breathe. I don't want to do this anymore. And so they put her in a hospice. She went off the medicine and she was gone within 12 hours. My father, he fought the same thing. He had COPD real bad, heart failure. He fought to the very, very last breath. But he went into hospice because he knew there was no way out of it. So he decided, okay, I'm going to go. And I can't.
cannot blame him. So if I get that way, maybe I'll find me, uh, you know, a, a trip to Sweden. I think you can do it legally in Sweden or in Port, uh, Port, Oregon. Port, Oregon, right? Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe I'll get taken out by some flying squirrel that hits my head as I'm going down the road at 100 miles an hour. And that'll be it. Lights out. I don't know. Life is life. So y'all take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there. And I will talk to you later.